Welcome back. If you're like me and you like running Linux on your laptops, desktops, etc., but are forced to work in an environment where you have to use a different operating system, I very quickly start to miss the conveniences and the habits that I've picked up while using Linux. And one of the primary things that really ticks me off about non Linux operating systems is how mundane and tedious to install software. And I'm not talking about like the software that comes from their glorified app stores or anything like that. I'm talking about like the open source software that is freely available on the internet that you have to troll through websites to go and download. What I'm saying is package management on Linux is so nice. So how do we replicate this on Windows and Mac? Because inevitably we do have to interact with these platforms at some stage. I mean, maybe if you're lucky, you can ignore these platforms altogether, more power to you. But if you are having to have a Windows or Mac OS install hanging around somewhere at home or at work or for other reasons, then it, you may as well have some suggestions of how we can replicate that package management goodness in these commercial operating systems. So that's what we're gonna to do today. All right, so most of these are probably well known to many in the community, but because they were new to me only a few years ago, I figured I might share my own findings here as well. So first of all, if you're on a Mac, Homebrew is probably the gold standard for package management on Mac OS. Curiously enough, Homebrew as a package manager also exists for Linux. I don't really know why they'd wanna do that apart from maybe because of Mac OS's larger user base, there are packages that are pre-done that are available for Linux. Again, Homebrew makes sense on a Mac. When you've already got great package managers like DNF, Pac-Man, uh, Apt, you certainly wouldn't wanna go and use this on Linux in my own opinion, but for running on Mac OS, it actually works surprisingly well. Uh, in order to get it set up and running, you have to be able to open up a terminal on Mac OS, grab this command, which I, again, I don't advocate for just randomly grabbing commands off the internet, slapping them into a terminal and watching it wreak havoc. But in this case, Homebrew is pretty well documented and well accepted. So this command, copy paste it into the terminal and you will have to uh, sort of scale back some of Mac OS's security protocols in order for the for Mac OS to allow the package manager access to the hard drive where it needs it. But this process is fairly well documented and it's a fairly uh, standard practice when it comes to setting this thing up. Once you do have it set up, you can access a lot of the main applications, especially open source ones that you would come to expect and it will install those and through simple commands, you can keep them updated, which is honestly one of the most important things. But taking the time to get familiar with Homebrew's uh, command structure can give you a lot of flexibility, almost in the same vein to what Arch users enjoy on the AUR. A lot of these revolve around uh, pre-made or community-made scripts that will allow you to download and install the applications uh, directly onto your system, wherever they may be. Now, some of these are going to be system level uh, applications that are installed beyond sort of Mac OS's sandboxing uh, mechanism. And some of these are just going to download the latest .app bundle and uh, slap it over in your applications folder. But the good news is, is that Homebrew out of the box by default supports both of these things and can be very useful for installing and upgrading apps on your Mac OS. Now on the Windows side of things, you have the well-established Chocolatey. Chocolatey has been around for some time now and uh, as a package manager on Windows, uh, this thing has kind of gone from strength to strength in that what started out as a fairly simple and straightforward Windows package manager, very similar to how Linux uh, does their package manager. Nowadays, Chocolatey has kind of gone into uh, overdrive mode with uh, so many features and uses that uh, it seems to have garnered a more enterprise focus in the last few years than perhaps what it looked like in its earlier years. Now it's still useful for an individual to use just command line to manage the software that's installed on their system. Um, but if you want an option that's already built into Windows and is pretty simple as well, Winget is a tool that only emerged in the last few years. Uh, in the latest iterations of Windows 10 and 11, there is a tool that's built into those versions of Windows that allows you to uh, install software that's freely available online uh, using command lines. Now, while you can search for these 
uh, software selections. You can update them, you can remove them and all of that kind of thing. It doesn't have quite the same level of flexibility that something like Chocolatey has. So if you're looking for a package manager on Windows that will give you like all of the tools that you know your Linux, your favorite Linux package manager gives you, uh, Winget is probably not gonna do it for you, although features keep getting added to it. You're definitely gonna be better served over in Chocolatey land. Uh, so those are kind of the tools that I am using on a fairly regular basis. Like every time I, I log into Windows and I think to myself, oh, I really need VLC for this or I need to go and get latest version of Thunderbird or whatever it is, uh, jumping in and being able to go Winget install Thunderbird or Winget install whatever it is or Winget update has been very useful. They all have their own little quirks. And honestly, at the end of the day, I'd much rather be doing this just within Linux because it just seems cleaner and more well-designed, but these will fill in the gap and scratch that itch for you. Hope you found it helpful. See you in the next one.